Okay, sure. The 2023 World Cup won't have some of the biggest superstars in rugby, with last-minute injuries and suspensions impacting a few of the competition favourites. But we will see a lot of fresh faces and reform teams throughout the tournament. Without a doubt, this is the most competitive World Cup in history. Let's go group by group and see which countries will survive the pool stages and who I predict will advance further and win the trophy. I'll also have a crack at top try scorer, top point scorer and player of the tournament. Just quickly, World Rugby has made an absolute mess with this pool system, but they can't be too disappointed by it in terms of generating viewership. Think about it, everyone will tune in to watch France and the All Blacks, two of the most popular teams competing in Pool A. Then the Pool of Death will have fans setting their alarm clocks right around the world for every game. And while the weaker pools C and D don't have any countries in the top five, every single game will be an absolute fight for the win. No one can safely say who will make it out of the pool stages. So starting with Pool A, there's Uruguay and Namibia. Both sides don't have too much star power. Uruguay did manage to get an 8 point victory over Namibia just a few weeks ago and sit significantly higher in the world rankings. From my perspective though, Namibia have a few more recognisable names on paper that compete in quality competitions and should be able to finish fourth. The Italians have improved like crazy since the 2019 World Cup. They have three absolute superstars under the age of 25 coming through the ranks, Fischetti, Capuzzo and Garbisi. No disrespect to the Azuri, but they'll take on the All Blacks before having to verse France only 7 days later. Mamma mia indeed. While these games will be a good contest, I can't see them finishing anything other than 3rd. Host nation France will have the home crowd advantage on their side. Incredible depth across their 33 man squad. They were favourites to top this pool up until they lost their star fly half, Romain and Tamak. They're now sweating on the fitness of inside centre Jonathan Dante who looks like he's been ruled out and poor Valencia is also out of this World Cup. One crepey bit of bad news at a time, pardon my French. All of this is what makes me see the French finishing second in their pool. Sorry everyone, but after the All Blacks got smashed by the Springboks 35-7, I can't see them putting in a poor performance against the French. We all know they'll do everything they can to avoid back-to-back -back losses, which is why I have them tipped as the winners of Pool A. Pool B has been labelled as a pool of death because three of the top five countries sit inside of it. If you want to give yourself a headache, go ahead and try and predict how this one finishes. Romania are a definite 5th place finish for me. On a 5 game losing streak, I can't see them coming close to winning a game. The same can't be said for Tonga though. They'll be really strong in this World Cup. I've copped a fair bit of criticism for saying they could upset one of the big 3 in this pool. It's a bold statement, they really should finish 4th. But they have so much star power that's just joined their side for the World Cup. Anything can happen, especially if they come up against a 2nd string outfit. Now the order of the top 3 is where things get a little tricky. As it stands, Ireland are the best in the world and are forming a new rugby meta that is a treat to watch. All in hand, running rugby, they literally grab the game by the balls. An approach that leaves other fans green with envy. <laughs> Scotland are also a treat to watch. They play rugby the way it should be played. A super fit side at the moment with a little bit of wizardry and plenty of creativity. Then there's the Springboks. Well, they just made a huge statement over the All Blacks. A safer game plan that entails plenty of kicking, set piece dominance and car crash collisions. They've also shown vulnerability in the pool stages before, but this year, their squad has a lot of depth. 21 players back from their winning team in 2019. Besides missing their veteran number 10, Andre Pollard, there's a lot to be optimistic about for South African fans. Making things even more difficult though to predict is that Scotland's draw is actually amazing. They'll be able to field a full strength side for their most challenging games. Whereas South Africa and Ireland will need to rely on their depth to overcome a dangerous Tongan outfit only a week after some crunch games. In my eyes, this pool probably comes down to foreign against for me. Let's go with South Africa 1, Ireland 2, Scotland 3. Let me know down in the comments how you see these three finishing. Jumping over to Pool C, this is an easy 5th place finish for Portugal. El Lobos are an exciting team but still building as a rugby nation. I see a lot of hype and confidence about the Georgian team in my newsfeed. And that's fair enough, they have some seriously good rugby players. They'll be in the contest every game and play till the 80th minute. But honestly, their draw sucks, which is why I have them finishing 4th. They have to verse Fiji and Wales with a super short 6 day turnaround. If I was Ugi Ashvili, I'd be super dirty about this. <laughs> I can't even look at the camera. Third, I'm going against all the predictions, all the experts, I see this going to Wales. They haven't looked good at all this year, still plenty of talent in their ranks and super coach Warren Gatlin is steering the ship. But, going with my gut on this one, they just don't make it past the pool stages in this World Cup. In second, I've got the Flying Fijians. They're probably the most stable and consistent looking team in Pool C at the moment. They've got a really strong core group of players from the Fijian drawer, and most of their players are already based in France. They'll be very comfortable with the conditions, and I'm sure they'll get plenty of support from their club fans. 
Their all-round gameplay has improved so much since the last World Cup. They've got chemistry, a strong set piece, a tactical side to their game, and the Fijian flair. Which means in first place, I have Australia. I hope this isn't pure optimism taking over as a Wallabies fan, but my rationalising is Eddie Jones has been experimenting in almost every game since taking over. Zero wins from five games this year. I know I must sound insane saying they'll top their pool. Hear me out. Their opening match against Georgia will give them a world of confidence. And while he is under a lot of heat from the media at the moment, I think Eddie Jones' experience should be able to get the best out of this fresh Wallaby squad. It all could go horribly wrong though. Only two fly halves in the squad with a total of six caps. I don't have any research on this, but seriously, has a team with a rookie fly half ever won a World Cup before? I don't think so. If Australia gets out early... Forget it, boys. All right, good luck. You gotta give yourself some caps, boys. And this leads me on to the big D. Oh, sorry, I should say pool D. Another highly competitive pool. Chile are definitely on the outer with recent losses to Namibia and Uruguay. I can't see them winning a game, not even close. Fourth may come as a surprise to many of you, but Japan has this lockdown for me. I don't think Japan is in very good form at the moment at all. Host of the last World Cup, but have seen a steady decline in results. Almost polar opposite to the Brave Blossoms is Samoa. They're in excellent form at the moment with the influx of stars joining their team. Payao, Sopawanga, Luatua, they're quality, quality players. Watching them play at the moment, you can tell the chemistry is still building. Don't worry though, the physicality is definitely there. They take on England in their final pool match and I think this will be a decider for second place. Because England have been in some terrible form. They are underperforming massively. On paper, they're not a dreadful team at all. There's definitely something going on behind the scenes though because it's baffling when you look at the quality of players compared to their effort on the field. I think they'll be able to hold out a dangerous Samoan outfit purely because they have two weeks to prepare for that game after taking on Chile. Argentina are my tip to actually win the Big D. I think they'll get a victory over England to start their campaign and continue playing this exciting brand of rugby we're seeing at the moment. Plenty of sneaky inside balls and offloads to tear up the defensive lines of the rest of Pool D. Competitive losses to the Springboks and a nice balance of experience and X-Factor, they'll be dangerous. I guess we should take a look at how I see the knockout stages playing out. This by no means will actually happen, but it's fun to think about. The All Blacks will take on Ireland. I see the All Blacks getting some sweet revenge after their series defeat last year. Most of their players have been there and done it before. Ireland hasn't won a knockout final at a World Cup, full stop. Add on to this that they'll be coming off a draining set of pool matches, likely to have a few players missing with niggles or injury. A very different contest compared to a fresh Irish side taking the field. France will take on the Springboks. Both are heading into the tournament missing their preferred fly halves. I really believe France will somehow find a way to nudge out the box in this contest. Although they'll definitely leave the game bruised and battered. If the Springboks do manage to win this match though, they'd have to go on to win the tournament. I just can't see them managing to beat all the sides in that top echelon without dropping a game. Australia would be matched up with England, a grudge match. Not only would Eddie Jones be looking to get one over his old team, I don't think he'd be able to sleep at night if the Poms knocked him out of another World Cup as Wallaby's coach. An absolute 50-50, as much as I don't want to be that guy pushing his own country, my brain just tells me Australia gets the job done. And Argentina vs Fiji. Now, wouldn't this be a crazy game to watch? An offload-a-thon with plenty of line breaks. I'd love for Fiji to win this game. I'd probably get a raging semi for a Drata jersey. But I'd also be just as happy for Lost Pumas to march on into the semi-finals. A lot of respect for both of these teams at the moment. I think Argentina have been too quiet leading up to this World Cup not to make some noise and go a long way. Therefore, the semi-final matchup would be the French taking on Australia, which the French win comfortably, and the All Blacks taking on Argentina. I mean, surely the All Blacks take this one out. Although, the thought of Michael Checker's face painted all over New Zealand newspapers is absolute gold. Which leads on to the final of France vs New Zealand. A classic rivalry with the French being the All Blacks traditional bogey team. What are the chances of the first game of the World Cup could be the same as the last game? As much as my brain is telling me the All Blacks win this one, I'm going to say the French slightly edges out the All Blacks in an absolute spectacle. This is legitimately the hardest World Cup to predict. In the back of my mind is all the upsets from the last time the World Cup was in France way back in 2007. Now the player I see scoring the most points throughout the tournament, it has to be the All Blacks' Richie Maunga. I think they'll score the most points throughout the tournament and given their pool matchups, a goal kicking number 10 is a shoe in for top point scorer. He's looked super confident in 2023, so I'm backing him on this one. Looking at who will score the most tries, well, there's a lot of good wingers out there at the moment. You'd think it would have to be a French or New Zealand winger. Damien Pinot, Bill Jordan, Mark Talia, all great shouts. Then again, very likely to see some more tries from the hookers. 
Malcolm Marks and Dan Chan, pretty good for a meat pie. For this video though, I'll go with Will Jordan because the All Blacks score more tries than any other team and for the forwards, I'm going to go with Malcolm Marks. My prediction for player of the tournament, I'm going to go with the big rig from France, the number eight, Greg Aldrich. He's been enormous in 2023 and while Anton Dupont is a great shout, I'm staying loyal to the forwards. Let me know who your picks are down below. If anyone gets all three right, I'll buy you the Rugby 24 game that's disappeared off the face of the planet. Think about it. Everyone's going to tune in to watch Host Nation. <laughs> Nation.